Hey everyone, welcome back to New Method Live. And today we are talking about inflammation. We're gonna talk about the three main causes of inflammation. Why are we talking about inflammation? It's pretty easy. Inflammation makes you sick. Inflammation gives you disease. Inflammation is the reason you don't feel good. So if we're gonna to get to the core of what's going on with you, we have to talk about inflammation. Inflammation affects everything. It affects your brain, it affects your belly, your skin, your joints. You name it, inflammation is part of it. So today, we're going to talk about what is inflammation, the three main causes of inflammation, and of course, how to fix it. So what is inflammation? Let's talk about that because not all inflammation is bad. Inflammation is actually a great thing. Your body has this really cool way of healing. Inflammation is when your body brings a whole bunch of white blood cells and other inflammatory markers to the area because it's thinking that it needs to heal it. So what does that mean? If we have something called acute inflammation, acute means it's temporary, it's short term. I cut myself and then the next day it hurts a little bit, the area is a little swollen and tender, that's inflammation but we need that inflammatory process to heal. Without it, we wouldn't get better. If I fall down and hurt my knee and the knee is inflamed for a few days, that's acute inflammation, it's short-term inflammation. And that's my body bringing all these white blood cells and inflammatory markers because it's trying to heal. It's a phenomenal process. So acute inflammation is necessary and we need it to heal, we need it to stay alive. The problem is chronic inflammation. The word chronic in health means the long term, it's lasting too long. Chronic inflammation is where we get into trouble. So now the body's not just having inflammation to get to something and stopping, it's continuous. And so even though there's no injury, you're looking around, you're like, my body looks fine. Nothing's cut, nothing's broken. Why am I so achy? That's chronic inflammation. If you say to yourself, again, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I have all these diagnoses, I'm taking all these medications. What happened here? That's inflammation. That's chronic inflammation. And that's the problem. Because once we're in chronic inflammation, instead of healing, the body is attacking its own tissues. And this is where disease comes from. And then once we have the disease, the disease itself causes inflammation, right? So if I have irritable bowel syndrome, that is also inflammatory. So inflammation causes the disease, then the disease causes inflammation, and we're stuck in this inflammatory loop, and we have to get out of it. And that's what we need to do together. You might ask, what can I test for it? Well, there is some testing for inflammation. There's two tests out there. One is called CRP, and one is called ESR. And they are tests what we call nonspecific inflammatory markers, meaning they don't tell us where the inflammation is, but it just tells us that you're inflamed. If they're elevated, if they're high, then yeah, you have inflammation. But if they're low, you still might have inflammation. That's a problem with some of these tests. If you're achy and not feeling well, and in that state of, I don't feel good-itis, you have inflammation. Doesn't really matter if the markers are there. So use them. If they're positive, it's a for sure. But if it's a negative, you still can have inflammation. And here we are, three top causes of inflammation. There's many causes, and the list is endless. And I could probably do one talk a week about the causes of inflammation, but we're gonna focus on three today. And the first one, I know you're not going to like it. I'm sorry. It's diet. It's the standard American diet. The acronym is SAD, standard American diet. And it's just a sad diet. It's not a coincidence that we call it that. The amount of starch and sugar that we eat in our diet is inflammatory. We keep eating the carbs. We keep eating the sugar. It causes something called insulin resistance, which means our body is just, it can't handle all the carbs we give it. So we keep eating the carbs. The body's trying to process it, but it gets resistant to it. So it doesn't know what to do with it. So what it does is it creates a layer of fat around your organs. That's crazy. So even if you don't see it, it's happening around your organs. If you didn't catch my video on fatty liver, make sure to do it right after this. Fatty liver really goes into detail about how it happens. But the point is when you eat carbs and your body doesn't know what to do with it, it starts creating fat around your organs. 
And that fat around the organs actually creates inflammation. It releases something called cytokines, which is inflammatory markers. So you eat the carbs, it wraps your organs in fat, that fat causes inflammation, that inflammation makes you not feel good, and that not feel good eventually will lead to disease. So that's the loop of inflammation from diet. So what do we have to do? We have to change the diet. I know everyone's rolling their eyes. Please don't make me change my diet, but I can't help it. You have to change your diet. It's the beginning and the end of everything. And remember, when I talk about changing diet, it's about removing the bad stuff, but it's also about putting in the good stuff. So you have to remove the carbs, the high fructose corn syrup, the fried foods, the sodas. You got to let them go if you don't want inflammation. But you have to put in the anti-inflammatory foods, right? The avocados, the olive oil, the green leafy vegetables, the good fish, the good fruits like strawberries, blueberries, cherries, oranges. You have to put it back in. You have to eat the rainbow. And another great trick for anti-inflammatory is intermittent fasting. And again, I have a video on that. So when you're bored, it's time to watch that. Intermittent fasting is amazing to get rid of inflammation in your body. So this brings us to our second thing. We talked about diet. The second thing is microbiome and dysbiosis. Fancy words. If you listen to any of my talks, you already know them. But if you didn't, welcome. I'm going to explain. Of course, if you want to deep dive into it, the topic you're going to look for in our videos is called leaky gut. But here's what you need to know. Your belly is full of billions and billions of bacteria, and they're supposed to be there. And that world of bacteria is called microbiome. And there needs to be a balance of good and bad, just like everything else. When everything is balanced, and it's a beautiful thing, our immune system is working well, only good nutrients are coming in, we're able to block out any bad stuff, and everything is working beautifully. But when our, when our microbiome is off and the bad guys are winning, the fancy word for that is dysbiosis. When we have dysbiosis and there's more bad bacteria than good bacteria, we have problems. The immune system is a mess, we get achy, and all this inflammation happens into every system of your body. Some of the things that mess with microbiome are antibiotics. I know, so always choose wisely. Consider twice before you take those antibiotics. Make sure you really need it. Don't fight for them if you don't need them. And of course, food, bringing us back to our diet. The diet is off, it can mess our microbiome. So we talked about diet, we talked about microbiome, but I promised you three. So the third one is stress. And I know, we're all stressed. I get it, and we're all stressed out. But here's the thing about stress. It, when we're stressed, think about it this way. If you're running down a dark alley and someone's chasing you, you're like, oh my God, I have to get out of here. So you're running and you're just focused on getting to safety. In that moment, your body is going to help you get out of the stress of someone chasing you. That's all it's focused on. It's going to help you get to safety. It's not worried about your immune system. It's not worried about repairing your gut. It is focused on just getting you to safety, right? So that's quick stress. But if you're under prolonged stress, it's the same thing. You keep telling your body, hey, I want you to focus on this. I want you to focus on the stress. And just like everyone else, it can only multitask so much. So if you're constantly asking your body to get you through stress, it's not going to focus on the healing, on the gut, on the immune system. It's going to focus on your stress. And other things fall by the wayside. So stress causes inflammation because it is not paying attention to calming down the immune system and calming down the inflammation actually creating more and more inflammation. So stress is a big one. It's a big problem with inflammation. And I know it's easier said than done. And of course, there's you can't have a conversation with reducing stress unless we're talking about time management, sleep. By the way, you need to watch my video on sleep. It's there somewhere. Watch my video on sleep. Sleep, of course. Um, meditation, calming thoughts, and a little self-care goes a long way. But the biggest stressor is once again, cause number one, diet. If you're filling your system with toxins, you're stressing the system. So one of the ways to avoid stress and reduce the stress in your system is back again to changing your diet. So it kind of always is the beginning and the end, I told you, the diet is where it all starts. Hey, thanks for watching this video on inflammation. I hope you found it super helpful. If you do, please like and subscribe. Check out last week's video on heart health. Bye.